OK, so got an equation, right? It's on the board. We want to be able to identify what are the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes. So I'm going to ask you guys three things. And then I'm also going to show you guys how to graph it, OK? So I think the easiest thing to identify right now is we can just tell that, hey, the center is at 0, 0, right? Not too bad, right? I got that one. OK, good. Um, now, the next thing we want to do is identify A, B, and C, because A represents the distance from the center to your vertices, right? And I'm not asking for the co-vertices, but that would be your value B. And, but C, we need to figure out B so we can find C, because C is the distance from your center to your foci. So remember, guys, is A squared equal to 5? No, because remember, A is um, uh, a, it's always a squared minus b squared. So a squared is going to be our positive value there. So a squared is equal to 4. Um, b squared, I'm still going to write in b squared, is equal to 5. Because if I want to find c squared, remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So a squared is 4 plus 5 equals c squared. Bless you, bless you. 9 equals c squared. So therefore, c equals 3. I'm not going to figure out, well, let's just figure out b for the sake of it. a equals 2, b equals square root of 5, and c equals 3. Is everybody OK with that? Yes? All right, so let's go ahead and look at our equation here. We notice that we have the center here is at 0, 0. We notice that my a a squared, I'm sorry, is under the x. That means my transverse axis is vertical or horizontal? Horizontal, horizontal right? So that means, my, um, that means my vertices are going to be two values to the right and two values to the left. Right? Does that make sense? Yes? No? A squared is under the x. That means you have a horizontal transverse axis. If a was under the y, like if y was over there, then you'd have a vertical. Remember, your vertices and foci all lie on the transverse axis. So they're going to be going left and right. So now we can look at our graph here and kind of say, oh, our vertices then are at negative 2, 0 and 2, comma 0. Now let's figure out what our foci are. Well, our foci is 3 units away, right? So the foci is going to be at um, is 3 units to the right and three units to the left. So we have a nice little dot. So I could kind of quickly do that. That's negative 3, comma 0, and 3, comma 0. Now before I sketch a graph, I'm going to want to identify the asymptotes. So remember the equation of the asymptotes when you have a horizontal, uh, horizontal asymptote, or horizontal transverse axis, I'm sorry is y equals plus or minus b over a times x minus h plus k. So I just plug in the numbers. It's really kind of that simple. Plus or minus the square root of 5 over 2 times x. Well, it's just going to be x and 0. Uh-oh. Does the square root of 5 divided by 2 look like a pretty easy um, line to graph? It's probably not going to be very fun, right? So rather than trying to like do that, if we wanted to estimate, I'm going to give you guys at least like a way to get around this. Like that is the equation of the asymptote, which could definitely be like a multiple choice question, right? I mean, that's a fair game. I just want to show you guys how to graph it. Rather than trying to like find that, find the slope and sketch it, one thing we can do is find the covertices, which is the square root of 5. Now you might say, I have no idea what square root of 5 is. Well, that's OK, because you know the square root of 4, which is 2. And you know the square root of 9, which is 3. So therefore, you can probably make the assumption that the square root of 5 is somewhere between 2 and 3. Would that make sense? Right? So why don't we just go up 2. So our co-vertice is probably somewhere like there, and probably somewhere like there. Again, just sketching, just estimate. So what we could do, if we wanted to find like where, how these asymptotes are, look, we could create a box. We can create vertical lines through our vertices, and then horizontal lines through our co-vertices. Then, the, actually, the shape of the asymptotes go through the corners of this box that we created 
and they intersect at the center. So now, that's my vertice. Now I can sketch the equation of my hyperbola. Because remember, the hyperbola is going to approach your asymptotes. Again, guys, I'm not really concerned about your graphing skills. But just wanted to kind of give you guys a little trick to graph the asymptotes. Because that's not very fun to graph, right? Rise over run, square root of 3. But you could still do it. And think about it, actually, if you think about it. If you wanted to do rise over run, square root of 3 is what? 2.3 or something? And then run is 2 over 2. It takes you right to that point, right? So if you just find the vertices and covertices, just create a box, it takes you to like where those are going to be at. Which is a little bit more helpful on the 